please welcome Pedro Silva to our stage. I also want to say give it up for everybody. This is a, a pretty amazing space to do comedy in, especially <laughs> for comedian. <laughs> have all these other emotions. I was like, I'm about to cry. I was like, sorry. I'm very, very uh, comedy-ish. Right? <laughs> but, um, but, but let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier where uh, it, anger was mentioned. And I learned really early that anger was my superpower if I knew how to use it right. And I discovered it in an interesting way. I was coming home from school one day and I was trying to avoid bullies because I was always kind of picked on because I was small and kind of a little different, let's say, to people. And so I was walking home feeling a little dejected, but I was trying to lift myself up and I was like, I don't care what people say about me, I'm just going to hold my head up high. And all of a sudden I heard, and I was like, turn around, it's a dog. And I'm like, well, that's a terrible way to end this day. <laughs> and the dog started coming at me. And I'm like, ah, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And I'm like, I'm like, oh crap, this dog's gonna get me. I got away from the bullies, but now I'm about to get eaten by a dog. And then all of a sudden, this feeling came over me that I wasn't very familiar with. And I eventually realized it was anger. And as I was running from the dog, and I almost got home, but I was scared that if I just turned too much, the dog was gonna catch me running my house. So I tried to outrun the dog. And then this anger kept building up and building up, and I was like, why am I running from this dog? Why are these people wanting to pick with me? Why? And this rage came over me, and I was like, I just stopped. And then I turned around, and the dog stopped. and was like, hmm? <laughs> I turned around, and I looked at the dog, and the dog knew what was going down. I started chasing that dog. <laughs> Running after the dog, and I'm running down the street, and I'm like, yeah. And people see me, a couple neighbors are like, what is wrong with that boy? I'm just running, and I'm telling myself, I'm gonna catch this dog, and I'm gonna bite it just like it wanted to bite me. And I was just tasting. I didn't care if I was gonna eat the dog hair; it didn't matter. I was like, I'm gonna get, and I just ran. I couldn't catch it. So then I was like, okay, I got a plan now, because I was so pissed, both with the dog and the world, and my own like fear that I was like, I'm never gonna let myself feel like this. So whenever I feel afraid, I'm gonna let my anger do its job. And so the way I prepared for it is I knew which house the dog had slipped out from. So on my way home from school the next day, I was like, hello. And he's just looking at this barking at me over the fence and then I went and click, opened up the latch, started with the dogs like, oh yeah? And then I'm like, ah, I'm running back after the dog, and then somebody said, I, I see what you're doing, boy. I'm going to tell your mama. I'm going to tell your mama. You know what I'm saying? Let this dog go. So that, I, that ended that. <laughs> but I told myself from now on, for the rest of my life, whenever I feel fear, I'm going to face it, and I'm going to let my anger do its work. And so I ended up having these three fears that were the top of my fear list. The first one was public speaking. Can you believe it? <laughs> The second one was Adolf Hitler, which I'll get into in a minute. And the third one was Madonna. I was terrified of her a little bit more than Hitler. And so the first one came because my family was very dramatic and performative. My mom, my brothers, my cousins, but I just like reading books and keep to myself. And my mom could say, how can you be my son when you just sit in the corner reading books all the time? And I was just like, I don't know. That's what I wanted to do. I would just every summer get a pile of books, sit in the corner, first thing in the morning, read, 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 flip them out, read, 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 flip, read, read, go back to the library, stack back up, do it again. So my mom decides that she's going to make me overcome this fear, and she signs me up for a black history presentation. Now my brother is going to do this with me, and my brother, performative, just like my mom. So we go out and I'm like, mom, please don't let me do this. She's like, oh, you're gonna do it. And you're not gonna embarrass me either. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we show up to the event and my brother just is all happy. The song starts playing and my brother's like, da -da 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 -da. hey, stars don't carry money. They only glow, you know. And he's like super excited. And I'm standing next to him like this. <laughs> not moving, not doing anything. And I'm like thinking in my head, like, 
oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And I look at my mom and I have this look on her face like, don't you feel sorry for me? Don't you know that you shouldn't have put me in this situation? And like a good mom would do, they would encourage you, but my mom didn't do that. <laughs> she did like this. <laughs> and I was like still standing there like in shock. My brother's just singing along. And all of a sudden her finger goes from pointing at me, her thumb goes up and I go, oh, she's proud of me. And then I'm like, well, at least I stood up here, but then I see her thumb moving across. And then it comes to her neck. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> so then I was like, oh crap. And so what I started doing is I started cracking up laughing. And that's all I could do. I was like, <laughs> and everybody's like, what is going on? That started to show. And my brother still like, stars don't carry money. And I'm like, I'm gonna stop. And then I run, and I run straight down the aisle, run out, and then I start praying, God save me, take me away from here. It was a whole mess. But eventually, as you can tell, I overcame that fear. That's for another story. So then, Adolf Hitler. Why? Because he made no freaking sense to me. I couldn't understand how this crazy person can make so many other people crazy. And the craziest thing that I didn't understand about him was he would say that blonde-haired, blue-eyed people were the best. And I was like, has this fool looked in a mirror? <laughs> and so it freaked me out that someone could use words in a way that would make people crazy and the people's own eyes would be deceived. And I was like, how is this possible? But I thought I'd never have to face that for you. Because, hey, he's gone. <laughs> well... <laughs> Last is Madonna. How do I get afraid of Madonna? Well, <laughs> sadly, my mom and dad divorced when I was two years old, and my dad married a white lady. And my mom told me, you better never bring a white woman home ever in your life. I will kill you. And so I was like, no self. <laughs> I will not, under any circumstances, bring a white woman home. And then one day, 1989, I turned on MTV and I saw Madonna and she was singing a song and it was it's a, becoming famous again. It's like life is a mystery. And I'm like, it is a mystery. I want to stand alone. I'm like, I am alone. You call my name and it feels like home. Not like I want a home. There with her curly brown hair in the video. Then she comes out and the whole video is about a, a innocent black man who went to jail for a crime he didn't commit. She was a witness to the crime. She runs from the scene and runs into black Jesus. Black Jesus looks at her and goes, mm -hmm. and then she goes, oh, I gotta change her heart. She goes and tells the police that the black man's innocent and they let him free. I'm like, this white woman's amazing. <laughs> I'll never date a white woman except for Madonna. <laughs> I'll avoid Madonna at all costs. <laughs> which was kind of easy. <laughs> and then, life, 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 life. Some years pass. I get on a phone conversation with this woman I've never met before with a contact or email. I'm talking to her on the phone. And I'm like, I'm single at this time. And I'm talking to her. I go, are you white? <laughs> and she goes, yes. I said, whew, I'm so glad because I don't date white people. <laughs> and, she's like, and she's like, well, maybe you'll change your mind when we meet. And I'm like, never. But I met her. And she had curly brown hair, just like Madonna. She asked me about the Bible, and I married her. <laughs> and the last, back to Adolf Hitler. I thought there'd never be anybody that dumb. <laughs> and there'd never be any people dumb enough to fall for his crap ever again until Orange Julius Caesar. <laughs> and I will end with this little piece. I have several friends who have absorbed this person's way of being. And I've had to deal with them. Not all of them white, some of them black, and some of them brown. And I've tried and tried and tried to talk to them and make peace. I'm not trying to change their minds, but just trying to understand where they're coming from. And one friend said something to me that just blew my mind, and I had to face this fear. I said, bro, I hear everything you're saying, 
I just can't agree with you. And I don't understand how you could cross this line given that you're from this group that gets demeaned by this person. Please help me understand. And then he said something that was on the edge of profound. He said, look man, I'm not a smart person. I was like, okay. He said, some people may even call me dumb. I was like, all right. <laughs> Trying to see what he's trying to, you know, maybe Rocky Balboa me, you know, and just give me like a little Rocky Balboa speech. And he goes, but when I hear this man speak, I feel smart. <laughs> 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 I feel <laughs> My friend, that was indeed the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I agree with you that you are not smart. <laughs> and there's one more person that's going to be calling you dumb, and it is me. <laughs> and so, I face that fear. <laughs> and now I'm just waiting for the next one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>